stand wherever you are tonight with your hands lifted all over the place. Would you humbly begin to thank God for your life all over the place. All over the place. If you have a bag, just come towards the front and just thank God. Just thank God. Wherever you are, just thank God. Give him glory. Give him praise. Give him all the adoration. Lift your hands up. Begin to love on Jesus. Begin to love on Jesus. Shadana Bahaya. Kono Boho Thank you, Jesus. Lift your hands. Semi Shawu Wunjuma Esifa. Lift your hands. Why, Dosu Heraze Abi Tsunami Sami Shau Unjuma Hesifa Lift your hand. Yeah, 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 why? Yeah, yeah, that's who you're a saint. See, no, 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 Let's see for Let's see for one. Yeah, yeah. Don't Begin to thank God for your life. Shadow and almost Lift your voice and begin to thank Him for your life. Shabbat and Mosade. Oh, the Mosade and the Mosade. Lift your hands and talk to Jesus. Shadow and Mosade and the Mosade. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you an adoration. Shadel Abosa, Shadel Abosa. You are glorious. Lift your hands. Father, we love you. We praise you tonight. Thank you for the privilege of life, the gift of life, the blessing of life. The psalmist said, if it was not God who was on our side, 
where would we have been if it was not God who was on our side? When men rose up against us, they would have swallowed us up alive. We are grateful for the gift, for the preservation, the protection, the sequester, the indemnity, the covering of God. Thank you for yet another day. Thank you for yet another week. Thank you for yet another month. Thank you for six incredible years of grace and mercy. We are grateful for our failures and our successes. We are grateful for our fallings and our rising. We are grateful for the wisdom that you have taught us. In Jesus' name tonight, we say, have your way. Speak to us in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Go to three persons and tell him, oh, I'm excited to see you in church tonight. Go to three persons and just give the person a warm Holy Ghost hug and tell him or oh, her, happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Move from your seat. Please be seated in God's presence. If you are at the back, could you walk up to the front? Everyone be seated in God's presence. You, you, you didn't tell your neighbor happy Valentine's Day. Stand to your feet and go to somebody and wish your neighbor a happy Valentine's Day. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated in God's presence. I'm excited to see each and every one of you in church. I'm excited because you are here and I'm excited because God is about to do something powerful in your life. Amen. Stand to your feet and give the Lord a shout of praise. I said those of you at the back, come to the front. That's the instruction I gave you. Come to the front. Amen. Look at someone and say, God is going to do a great thing in your life. Amen. Be seated in God's infallible presence. We thank God for the gift of life and how far he has brought each and every one of us. We give him glory for his covering and preservation over our destinies. Destiny Empowerment Chapel is six incredible years old amen and within that six years we've learned a lot of lessons today is uh, an international day for love so i'm excited that you are in church i'm sure everybody's waiting to be in church on saturday and sunday but the fact that you are here because god has a destiny appointment with you and I believe that God is going to do something great in your life. Amen. Would you give a shout to our online viewers? To all our online viewers. I want us to stand and clap our hands for all our online viewers. God bless you for celebrating with us. And let's use the opportunity to share the link to bless somebody tonight. Amen. Look at somebody and say, you look good on this Valentine's Day. I told my wife I don't celebrate Valentine's. I don't see it in the Bible, so I'm not a fan of it. Yet my wife got me some chocolate, so I'm excited about it. Amen. People celebrate Valentine's more than Easter and Christmas, so it really makes me sad. Amen. Valentine's must not take preeminence on what is of great necessity. We respect love, we believe in love, but anything that goes above the radar, we don't believe in it. So we thank God it's a day of love. I believe that love must be something that is daily. I see people posting their wives, their mothers, and I find it to be a bit funny because if it takes Valentine's to celebrate your mom or your wife, then you are not serious. Every day is a plus that you must celebrate. Amen. It's been a hectic week. Last week, Friday, we were in Takradi for an explosive encounter. Takradi caught fire for God. 
Friday, Saturday, I came and preached on Sunday and uh, Sunday after church, I had to go back to Takradi for the climax. It was amazing. I, we got to the airport on Monday and they said the flight has been cancelled. At one o'clock, they said the flight had been cancelled. So we had to quickly arrange for a, a vehicle to bring us to Accra. I got to Accra at about 7 p.m. And I had a flight to Europe at 10. I had people waiting for me in my house to pray for me. All that. I got to the house, freshened up, took a little bite, attended to my guest, and I headed to the airport. I got to the airport half past 8 to about 9. They waited for me. Praise the Lord. And I jumped into the flight, went to France, transited. I went to see my family in Denmark, Tuesday, Wednesday, and last night I arrived safely back in Ghana to come and preach to you and prophesy to you. Amen. If you are excited about what God has for you tonight, I promise that these days we won't keep long. I was telling Reverend Alpha that I want us to close on time because we'll be here 10 a.m. tomorrow for a strong teaching. Then Sunday, I have a very powerful surprise for you. Amen. There is a huge man of God sitting in the aeroplane coming to Ghana just for Sunday. He's flying all the way from Washington, D.C., United States just to be here. So it's a big surprise to you. If you now, if you love God's word and we stand for kings, let us stand for the reading of God's infallible, unadulterated, unchanging, unchangeable word. Sunday officially is six incredible years for church. And it's also my books. I, my new books are out. We have dedication. We have the probability of faith. Then the four books I did within one and a half months, it, they are also out. Sunday, we adore them. We have relationship wisdom. I told you we're going to clap your hands onto Jesus. We have this powerful book, Time Use Wisdom. Amen. Look at someone and say, use the time God has given to you to achieve a lot. Amen. And we have what we call here financial wisdom. And... Uh, my my this is this is the biggest it's called wisdom secrets for maximum impact clap your hands onto jesus these books if you're in ghana and you ask me to sell it to you no matter how much you want to pay i will not sell it to you because the cost of production is a lot it costed me a lot to produce these over ten thousand usd to produce these as i speak to you they are printing them so if you want to purchase it, you have to have about $500 to buy one. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. Amen. I'm a lover of God. How many of you are excited about God's word? Amen. Go into the book of Ruth, the first chapter. The book of Ruth, chapter one. You want to do ministry stress-free? No stress. No. We want to take our time and do ministry. Amen. Last year, by this time, we are in church and I was crying. <laughs> the bills on my head. Amen. People came and enjoyed the anniversary and I went home and I was crying. No more. No more stress. Say, look at someone and say, no more stress. <laughs> the book of Ruth. Um, philosophically, we, we see the light in, in theology. The author is purported to be Samuel or prophet Isaiah of the Old Testament to show the ancestry of David. Please understand that thematically the book of Ruth is a simple historical record of life in Israel during the judges, illustrating the law of kinsmen redemption. It records the story of a Gentile woman in the genealogical lineage of Jesus Christ through David. And philosophically, anytime you look at the book of Ruth, uh, it reminds every believer of two things. That God does in, indeed rewards character. 
Look at someone and say, God does indeed reward character. Uh, number two, that God will accomplish his purpose in the end, even if he has to use the odds to do it. And in Ruth chapter 1, the verse number 1, I want us to read in concert. And now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land. And a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab. He and his wife and his two sons. Watch this, watch this. And the name of the man was Elimelech. And the name of his wife, Naomi. And the name of his two sons, Malon and Chilion. The Euphratites of Bethlehem, Judah, and they came into the country of Moab and continued there. And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died. Take notice of this. The husband died, and she was left and her two sons. And they took them wives of the women of Moab. The name of the one was Opa, and the name of the other Ruth. And they dwelled there about 10 years. Watch this. And Malon and Chilion died and also both of them and the woman was left of her two sons and her husband. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law that she might return from the country of Moab for she has heard in the country of Moab how the Lord had visited his people in giving them bread. Wherefore she went forth out of the place where she was and her daughters, two daughters-in-law with her hand, they went on the way to return unto the land of Judah. Watch this. And Naomi said unto her two daughters-in-law, go return each to her mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you. As ye have dealt kindly with the dead and dwelt with me. The Lord grant you that ye may find rest each of you in the house of a husband. Then she kissed them and they lifted up their voice and wept. Let's read again. They said unto her, surely will return with thee unto thy people. Watch this, watch this, watch this. And Naomi turned again, my daughters, why will ye go with me? Are there yet any more sons in my womb that they may be your husbands? Verse 12, quickly, turn again, my husbands, go your way. My daughters, I beg your pardon, and I am too old to have a husband. If I should say I have hope, if I should have a husband also tonight, should also bear sons. Would ye tarry for them till they were grown? Would ye stay for them? From having husbands, nay, my daughters, for it grieved me much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord is gone against me. And they lifted up their voice and wept again. Opa kissed her mother in law and Ruth clave unto her. Watch this. Look at something saying, Ruth clave unto her. And she said, Behold, thy sister in law is gone back unto her people and her and her gods return thou after thy sister in law watch this 16 17 and Ruth said entreat me not to leave thee or to return from following after thee for whither thou goest i will go and whither thou lodgest i will lodge and thy people shall be my people and thy god shall be my god where for thou diest will i die and there will i be buried the Lord do so unto me and more also, if not, but death parted me and thee. I have preached from this concept before when I said you would bounce back. But tonight I see deep revelation and deep, uh, deep uh, thoughts. And I'm going to take it from a different dimension and direction. You want to look at your neighbor and prophesy you will heal from this pain. No, that was not good enough. That was not good enough. Go to five persons and prophesy. You will heal from this pain. No, no, no. That was not good enough. Can we have church here? Go to somebody and say, you will rise up again. Mm, 
that was not good enough that was not good enough go to someone else and prophesy you will rise up again you will rise up again you will rise up lift your hands and prophesy with all your mind say i will rise up again say lord heal me from this pain in jesus mighty name you may be seated in heavenly places it is an amazing thing to serve god serving god teaches every believer the wisdom of god you will never meet god in the university you will never discover god in the lecture theater god cannot be experimented but only experienced it's amazing to serve God because God never reveals himself even through the pages of scripture. I've never seen a man that said I met God whilst I was reading the scripture. And that God jumped up and I saw God. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, you can only meet God through your life experience. It is through experience that you encounter God. And it's exclusive. It's idiosyncratic and it is something that is only paramount to you. My experience with God is quite different from your experience with God. That is why some people do not understand your praise. Because anytime you holler hallelujah, it comes from the very depths of your soul. Somebody is here tonight and the person will praise God and other people will think that they are crazy. Because they have not experienced God in the dimension that you have. Am I making sense here? Uh, look at someone and say that pain will go. On. Ladies and gentlemen, it's amazing that pain has now become the catalyst and the conduit that God uses for our gain. Uh, when you study the historicity and the chronicle of great men who have made impact in their generation. They will uh, reveal to you their, that their foremost weapon and what God used to train and to build them was pain. Uh, looking at a woman who is one of the richest and wealthiest women in the nation of America and across the nations of the world, Oprah Winfrey. Oprah Winfrey experiences a very traumatic thing in her life when she said, I was raped at the age of nine years. Uh, look at someone said, there is power in pain. And the richest man on the planet called Earth said, I, I didn't even complete my university education. Um, you look at a great woman who has made impact also in the nations of the world, who happens to be a tele-evangelist, Joyce Mayer. Uh, she said, I was sexually and mentally and emotionally and verbally abused by my father. As far back as I can remember until I left home at the age of of 18 years. Uh, Josh Mayer is one of the wealthiest preacher in the world. And she tells her story of pain that she was sexually and mentally and verbally abused 
abused by her father until the age of 18 years. Uh, uh, Dr. Ben Carson, a politician, said, I struggled academically throughout elementary school. Uh, stay with me. When you look at this storyline, it will bamboozle and baffle your mind that the beginnings of all these great leaders were cumbersome, awkward, and ungainly. Uh, when you look at their beginning, you don't see any future in their beginning. <laughs> Uh, the Prime Minister of UK, Tony Blair, the other said, my teachers used to call me a failure. Uh, when you look at the life of these men and women, you don't see any future in their beginning. I'm sure if you happen to be in their beginning, you would reject and never be their friends. <laughs> But I have since learned that our God is a master architect. <laughs> that if you look at the beginning of a man, you will never think there is greatness in that man. <laughs> but that is how God has made it. <laughs> That God has chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. Uh, the things that are despised, the things that have been forsaken, God has chosen it to confound the things that are mighty. I don't know whom I'm talking to. You may have had a terrible beginning. But one thing I know for sure that in the next 24 hours... Uh, Things will turn for your good. <laughs> uh, lift your hands and holler hallelujah. Uh, the greatest president. Uh, the greatest African president that ever lived. Uh, said I was in prison for 27 years and still became a president. <laughs> I remember in 2009, I traveled to Europe and I came back. <laughs> and I threw a knockout and I was apprehended. <laughs> uh, they put me at counter back for 20 minutes. <laughs> After 20 minutes, it felt like I had been there for 20 years. <laughs> uh, but Nelson Mandela was caged for 27 years. <laughs> Um, within the 27 years, he never thought that anybody would see destiny in his imprisonment. <laughs> Yet, out of his imprisonment, he rose to become the president of the whole of Africa. <laughs> I don't know whom I'm talking to. <laughs> um, the owner of uh, Apple, Steve Jobs. <laughs> He said, I used to sleep on the floor in my friend's rooms, uh, returning Coke bottles for food, for money, and getting quickly weekly free meals at local temples. He was a man that picked bottles and sent it to home so he could get a bite. I'm, I'm just wondering. I'm just wondering why God has wired our destinies this way. That before you can get to the creme de la creme, before you can get to the apex of impact, uh, before you can get to the zenith of manifestation, uh, God has made it in such a way that every child of God has to go through something. Uh, can I talk to somebody? Uh, look at somebody and you have to go through something. Uh, uh, you can never become who God has made you to be until you go through something. Uh, you will never rise up to become the greatest person in your family until you experience pain. Uh, uh, I've never seen a man do great exploit uh, without God taking him through pain. Uh, can I talk to somebody about suffering? Uh, uh, look at somebody say it will look for you. Uh, if you don't experience it on Monday, pause. Uh, if you don't experience it on Tuesday, uh, don't think 
that it is okay. If you don't go through it on Wednesday, wait for it. God will never make a great man of gain without pain. Look at someone and say, pain is necessary. Theologically, the non-Christian skeptic. Can I talk to somebody here? Slap your neck and say, there is a lesson in pain. Uh, the non-Christian skeptic. Uh, uh, give him full. I want to preach here. Uh, I want the preaching prophet and the drunken master to be released. Uh, uh, the non-Christian skeptic. Uh, um, they assert that if there is God, uh, why does He allow anyone to suffer? Uh, um, if there is God, if God is all good, uh, um, He will not permit anyone to suffer if God is all powerful why doesn't he eliminate suffering um, there is so much suffering in the world so there is no such a thing and a person as God uh, this is the battle the unbelievers have uh, the agonistics, the atheists, <laughs> um, the non-Christian skeptics, <laughs> um, they don't understand why a child of six months must be stricken by HIV. <laughs> They don't understand why we claim we serve God, <laughs> yet we are going through more suffering than those who don't serve God. <laughs> uh, can I talk to somebody here? <laughs> This is called God's justice in the face of human suffering. Or simply, why must the righteous suffer? In theological matrix, they coin the term theodicy, which is an investigation of the problem of divine justice. Um, the, the other day, Dr. Yancey said, where is God when it hurts most? And every man of God, every woman of God, under the sound of my voice, there is one time in your life where you looked at God and you could not find God. Am I talking to somebody? And you look at your life and you say, where is God uh, when it hurts most? Uh, the day you are in your so much of pain, you can't find God. Uh, can I talk to somebody now? Philosophically, a man called Norman Gessler. Uh, Norman Gessler said, suffering in the form of pain is to warn us of greater evil. Um, C.S. Louise, in discussing the purpose of human pain, he argues that suffering is God's way of showing and proving and drawing our attention from this evil world to himself. Uh, can I preach it tonight? Uh, stay with me and tell your neighbor you will rise up from this pain. Uh, shake your neighbor like you're going to shake his hands off. And say, neighbor, this pain will not kill you. But it will make you better. Uh, wave your hands and holler amen like a thunder. C.S. Louise. Uh, C.S. Louise whispers. And he said, God whispers to us in our pleasures. Uh, but he speaks to us in our conscience. Uh, yet he shouts in his pain. Uh, can I talk to somebody? So now you find out that pain is God's megaphone to rouse a deaf ear. Anytime I'm going through hell and high waters, God is saying something to me. Uh, the only way God communicates to us is through pain. Um, because anytime we are in pleasure, God is whispering. Anytime God wants to speak to us, he speaks to us through our conscience. 
but anytime we are in pain God is whispering uh, so Yancy said the planet is spoiled and mad and suffering reminds us of that uh, Norman Gessler said that suffering we know is what keeps us from self destruction um, if not for the pain you went through you wouldn't have had the wisdom you have today uh, look at some say the pain was necessary so now uh, God's permission of pain is not a mistake on his part but it is a gift that no man wants I came to tell somebody every hell and high waters every pain you have been through was a gift from God uh, you never heard that can I say it again look at somebody's neighbor for every hell the devil put you through uh, was actually a gift from God. Uh, whatever you experience was a gift. Uh, was a gift that taught you wisdom. Uh, whatever hell that you have been through uh, was a gift that God used uh, to teach you and to nurture you to become who you have become here today um, which means that suffering ultimately brings about greater goods uh, philosophically it is said that pain triggers you psychologically but it ends in moving you spiritually uh, C.S. Lewis said and I quote he said pain hurts but we are made perfect through suffering which means that anytime I go through the hurt of pain the end is perfection uh, can I talk to somebody um, uh, my father in the Lord uh, Bishop Noel Jones the other day made a statement he said the more we are broken the more we can be distributed um, which means that if I take a biscuit and I break it once I can only be distributed twice uh, so the devil put me through pain to break me but you see the devil does not understand that when he put me through repeated pains to break me three times he thought he was decimating me but the devil did not know that he was increasing my Oh, I feel a preaching in this place. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the enemy broke you two times. He broke you three times. He broke you four times. But take a real look. The more he broke you, the more you were distributed in a larger extent. Uh, so now suffering becomes the remedial and the corrective process to produce good out of man. Uh, the devil thought he was breaking and tearing me apart. But the devil does not know that in my suffering, God exploits suffering for his redemptive purpose. Um, so now, when they put Joseph in the pit and they sent him to Potiphar, and Potiphar's wife lied on him and they sent him to the prison, they didn't know that they meant it for evil. God use the status of pain to increase his distribution. Um, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, my 
pain was necessary for who I have become now. For though the devil meant it for evil, but yeah, I feel I'm preaching tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so now, Sister Belinda, every now and then we ought to thank God for the devil. Uh, every now and then we have to thank God for Lucifer because the devil, Naomi, is a checkmate. Uh, the devil is a measuring stick. Uh, God will never use any man to check you, but God will use the hands of the enemy me to place you on track i can teach you i can father you i can pastor you but whatever i teach you is never enough but god will use the foolishness of the devil to place you on the track of destiny so now the devil thinks that he ruined you but he didn't know that he taught you wisdom so now the devil taught that he took your job he took your marriage he took your sanity he took your anointing but he didn't know that he has created the opportunity for you to become better and not better so tonight I came to thank the enemy I came to thank the devil for every hell he put me through because through it all I have learned to try Messiah. Slap your name in the neighbor. You have to thank God for the devil. You have to take a praise break and begin to appreciate the devil because for every hell the devil puts you through for every pain that you have been through it was necessary for the next level now you can see clearer now you can hear better now you can detect better now you can discern who is a better man and who is a best man before you could not see well until you went through pain and pain is an eye opener so now anytime I see pain I embrace pain because inside my pain is hidden my gain slap your neighbor's neighbor you will rise up again give the Lord a shout hey uh, take your seat. Uh, I really slow down. I hurt myself. Uh, the storyline teaches me. Uh, I have since learned. Uh, I have since learned that any time the unexpected happens, uh, the unusual is about to take place. Uh, can I say it again, Hannah? Uh, look at your neighbor's neighbor. Uh, any time the unexpected happens, uh, it placates. Uh, it denotes uh, um, that an unusual is about to happen uh, uh, because sometimes uh, it takes the unexpected uh, to provoke the unusuality of the anointing within you to come out uh, uh, sometimes it takes the unexpected uh, for the lionic nature of you to be provoked uh, sometimes some Somebody must misbehave before you for your lionic nature to be provoked. Can I talk to somebody? Look at someone said, let the lion in you roar. Lions don't roar at silence. Lions don't roar when things are not happening. It takes the insurrection of the devil for the lionic nature of you to come out. The only reason why you learn how to pray like the way you pray is because you face death and you defeated. Can I talk to somebody? Slurp your neighbor. And I'm excited about my pain.
pain because my pain made me who I am today if I had it easy I wouldn't have learned wisdom if I went through easy I wouldn't have learned how to denote and to discern can I talk to somebody look for a better neighbor and say thank God for pain for pain can I preach now uh, take your seat you make him in nervous uh, there was famine in Bethlehem uh, I feel like preaching in this place uh, there was famine in Bethlehem uh, anytime you look at the word famine uh, I feel something pushing me uh, um, anytime you see the word famine uh, uh, famine denotes an extreme scarcity of food uh, um, it, it denotes extreme hunger uh, famine talks about paucity and insufficiency <laughs> and there was famine in Bethlehem uh, Bethlehem philosophically in theology <laughs> and connotes the arena <laughs> of bread the house of bread <laughs> um, in etymological root meaning <laughs> we are looking at the house of provision <laughs> uh, theologically Bethlehem is known to be the bread box um, the Bible says, and now a certain man uh, named Elimelech, uh, he took his wife, uh, Naomi, and his two sons, and they sojourned. Uh, they traveled from Bethlehem of Judah to a place called Moab. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, anytime you look at the word Elimelech, uh, anthropologically, it means my God is king. When I talk of anthropology, I mean the doctrine of man. When you look at Naomi, Naomi means the pleasant one. A man who in his persona and porkitude, in his physiological morphology, he is an emblem of the kinship of God. Yet in a season of servitude, in a season of pain, in a season of famine, he took his wife, the pleasant one, and they moved to a strange land called Moab. Uh, look at some of pain. Pain can make you act crazy. Shaking with a pain can make you act crazy. And he took his two sons. The firstborn was called Malor, and the secondborn was called Chilion. Um, Any time you look at the word Malor, etymologically, the word Malor means sickness. Um, you look at the word Chilion. Can I preach here? Um, the term Chilion means weakness. Um, so he had two sons. One was sickness. The other was weakness. And they left the city of bread to go search for bread. Ladies and gentlemen, in Deuteronomy chapter 23 verse 3, the Lord had given a bylaw that an Ammonite or a Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord even until the tenth generation. Which means they came to the city where God said you will not go. You are not here tonight. They came to a place where God said you must not go. They came to a strange and a forbidden land. A God that he himself despised and said you must not go. Ladies and gentlemen, when they got to Moab, the Bible said Elimelech died. And Naomi was left of her two sons. Can I talk to somebody? This is the breadwinner. He takes his wife and two sons. They came to a strange land as a result of hunger. When they got to the land of Moab, the man who took his wife and two sons died. And the two sons married two women. One was called Opa, a young deer. The other was called Ruth, a beauty, a 
and a refresher. They lived there for 10 years. Then after the 10 years, the two boys, Malon and Chilion, also died. And Naomi was left all by herself. I don't know whom I'm talking to tonight, but this is a movie playing in your eyes. Look at somebody and say, I survived it. Uh, that was not good enough. Look at another person and say, neighbor, I'm here to tell you I am a survivor. Mm. Here is the story. My husband died. We are hungry. He brought us here to find food. And when we got to the land, my husband dies. Mm. And his two sons also dies. But Naomi survived. Uh, she survived irrespective of the pain. Uh, she survived irrespective of the sorrow. Uh, irrespective of the anguish, the stress, and the hunger. Uh, I, I, let me take a stationary break and rebuke the devil. I'm not dying today. Uh, and my wife is not going to be childless. Uh, that devil is a liar. I'm only preaching the Bible. Uh, lift your hands and shout. Yeah! I just had to send a notice to the devil. She had no husband. She had no sons. She had no income. But she survived it. I don't know whom I'm talking to, but tonight God sent me to tell somebody who is a survivor of misfortune. I came to talk to somebody who is a survivor of pain. I came to talk to somebody who is a survivor of varied attacks and variegated disappointment. Look at your neighbor and your neighbor. I am a survivor. I don't know whom God taught me to, but I came to talk to somebody that you are a survivor. If you look at your life and all the hell that the devil has put you through, even the devil is excited about you. When the devil looks at you, he gets a nervous breakdown because he can't fathom and understand upon all the problems you have been through. You are still in church on Valentine's Day praising your God. Can I talk to somebody? Your brain has been under pressure that folks went through the same thing you went through and they could not survive for one man but you went through it for many years and you are still standing on your feet tonight i didn't come to talk to every church person i came to talk to real survivors look at your neighbor and say neighbor i don't look like what i've been through i don't look like my past i am a survivor I've been through hell and back, but I've survived it. The devil attacked my finance, but I survived it. The devil attacked my ministry, but I survived it. The devil attacked my health, but I survived it. There are many people I started elementary with. Some of them have died and they were nowhere to be found. But I am a survivor. Slap your neighbor and look for another survivor and say neighbor I survived the pain I survived the disappointment I survived all the aggression I survived the assault I survived all the hell and if you are a survivor then lift up your voice and give the Lord a shout Slap your neighbor and say, oh neighbor, oh, that was not good enough. 
look for a better neighbor and say oh neighbor I am a survivor for though he slay me yet will I still trust in God I don't care what I have I don't care what I don't have I don't care what is there I don't care what is not there the fact that my life is intact means my destiny is intact there are many people at Kolebu who cannot preach who cannot sing who cannot walk who cannot talk who cannot wear but if you are alive today the fact that you broke the loose and survived yesterday it means your destiny is perfect I came to talk to a survivor I came to talk to a man a woman who has been through hell they laughed at you but you survived it they mock at you but you survived it they call you names but you survived it they said nothing good could come out of you but you survived it I came to prophesy unto somebody if God preserved you and if the devil could not kill you in 2019 then forget it because whatsoever is born of God overcome it the world slap your neighbor and say neighbor tomorrow by this time your enemies they will see the glory of the Lord lifted up in your life throw your hands and shout I survived it can I talk to survivors is there any survivors she survived 10 years of pain I came to announce unto somebody that power is the result of pain you will never get power until you go through pain anytime you see pain you must wait power is the result and I prophesy over your life God will restore unto you can I preach in the house I feel a preaching tonight God God yeah. restore the days that the palmerwares the locusts the caterpillars have eaten I see somebody whatever the enemy took from you tomorrow by this time get ready for double for your trouble the doors that the devil closed I see somebody tomorrow by this time yeah look at your neighbor and say neighbor I've been through hell but I'm not built to break can I talk to somebody look at your neighbor and say neighbor I went through hell but I'm not built to break if the devil could not break you then God will make you can I prophesy somebody get to the lead slap your neighbor say neighbor if the devil could not break you then yeah he will make you I prophesy no more breaking time is making time no more being down is elevation time slap your neighbor and say neighbor you will bounce back again you will rise up again you will Take your seat. Take your seat. Take your seat. Take your seat. 
Dieu. The first person to jump. I see you rising up. I see you rising up. Somebody here. Can I prophesy? We don't serve a dead God. We serve a living God. He's the same yesterday. He's the same today. He's the same forever. If God be for you, who can be against you when God says yes? No man can say no when God says no. No man can say yes when God says yes. No man can say no when God opens a door. No man can shout when God shut a door. No man can open if he did it yesterday. He's the same today. He's the same forever. I prophesy. God is on your side. Favor is on your side. Power is on your side. Victory is on your side. I prophesy. Anybody who saw your falling tomorrow by this time, they will see your elevation. Anybody who saw your weeping tomorrow by this time, they will see your power for weeping, 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 weeping. just endure for a night, but yeah. Love your neighbor. Say neighbor. Oh neighbor. Love your neighbor. Say neighbor. Oh neighbor. Oh neighbor. Your joy. Your joy. Your joy. Yeah. It's coming. Go to two persons and say your joy is coming, your power is coming, your victory is coming, your marriage is coming. Shout yes! Say yes! Say yes! Say yes! Say yes. I feel like preaching here. Somebody here today, tomorrow by this time, you will rise up again. You will rise up again. You will rise up again. Shout yeah! Ah! Ah! Shout yeah! Limelech died. Marlon Chilion died. But Naomi was the last killer. I see a spiritual tompo in the house. Is there any last killer here? The greater your shout, the greater your miracle, the louder your scream, the louder your miracle. Shout, yeah! That was not good enough. Shout, yes! Shout, yes! Say, yeah! Say, yeah! Say, yeah! A 
Elimelech dies. Adobosaya. Kodobosiada. Keva valiados. Blatukutukutukwa. Omene jaja. Agaba Judah. Aka Jehovah. Everything around her fell. But she was still standing. I prophesy in 2020. I see your miracle standing, your finance standing, your marriage standing, your grace standing, your life will stand. Lift your hands and shout, Yeah! Give the Lord some praise. Give the Lord some praise. Somebody begin to jump. 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 Yeah. As you dance tonight, I see God making a way for you. If you dance, you will prosper. Hey! Give the Lord a shout! Somebody jump! 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 Yeah. As you jump! Yeah! 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 yeah. Those of you who are not dancing, I take your miracle and I give it to those who are dancing. Give the Lord some praise. Ah! Give the Lord a shout. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise him, praise him. Ah! Give the Lord a shout. As you dance, move from your seat. Go to somebody. Say neighbor. Get ready. You will laugh again. Get ready. Can I prophesy? The greater your shout, the greater your miracle. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I'm dancing into my miracle. I'm dancing. Into my breakthrough, I'm dancing into my glory. Ah! Shout! Hey! Receive that miracle, receive that power, receive your testimony. Receive your glory. You will rise up again. I say you will rise up again. You will bounce back again. You will do better. Hey, hey, hey. Give the Lord a Say yeah! The greater your miracle, the greater your shout, the greater your shout, the greater your lifting. Shout yes! Shout yes! Shout yes! Lift your head. Lost everything. 
but she didn't lose herself. I don't know who made that loss. You lost some things, but you didn't lose you. I lost things, but I didn't lose me. If I lost me, then the devil won. But the fact that you did not lose you, it means your destiny is intact. And if God is not working on things for me, then he's working on me. And if God is not working on me, then he's working on things for me. So anytime I lose things, it means God is working on me. And I came to tell the devil, thank you for every pain that you put me through because I lost things, but I didn't lose me. And if I am entered, then greater, greater, greater is he that is in me than he Look at you and say, I lost things, but I didn't lose me. So she lost, but she was intact. And God restored her. And out of her, a stranger became the maternal lineage for Jesus to produce. I pray for you. Lose everything, but don't lose you. Let them say whatever, but don't lose you. Because if you are intact, anything else that the enemy took will fall back in place. Lose stuff, but don't lose you. Don't lose your mind. Don't lose your heart. Don't lose your soul. On this Valentine's Day, don't allow any man to break your heart. 